Thanks to you all and all of you queuing for coffee. You're very welcome to our seminar this morning. When you grab your coffee, feel free to come in and participate. Uh, Colm O'Brien is my name and I'm the founder of uh, two businesses uh, so far, uh, Colm O'Brien Motivation and Carambola. Carambola is a school meals business. And I'm just going to take this off if I may. Yeah, it'll be easier. Uh, so, um, I'm going to tell you a story, if I may. Let's check this. The Carambola story, okay? Uh, and it's to do with networking. It's to do with the importance of networking in any industry, but in particular in relation to the food and beverage industry. Uh, my first business failed. Okay? It failed quite spectacularly. I had a Beauty's Cafe, Beauty's Cafe franchise in Limerick. My background is Beauty's Cafe. I used to manage Beauty's in Grafton Street many years ago. Uh, I was the franchise manager for Beauty's Cafe. I started a Beauty's hotel chain. Then I took my own franchise in Limerick, and it failed. And of course, that was a very traumatic time for us all. Um, as an audience, complete the following sentence. Sometimes I win and sometimes I. Sometimes I win and sometimes I. Woohoo! Feeding Johnny, a copy of Feeding Johnny, my book. And he was up early. Sometimes I win and sometimes I learn. Uh, it's far more empowering, but for some reason, we've all been taught that if you don't win, well, clearly you lost. But of course, we all know those professionals out there, the difference between a professional and an amateur. An amateur will see it as a loss. A professional, say in a sports team, will go back into the dressing room, they'll review the video and see what didn't work to see how they can improve the next time. But okay, so sometimes I win and sometimes I learn is far more empowering. So several business ideas have failed en route to me standing here before you this morning. And the first one was, um, what does me falling off my ladder? <laughs> and my business is failing. And I also put this so far, several business ideas have failed so far. Why do you think I put so far onto the slide? Any takers? Say again? There might be a success going forward, but I'm also gonna keep trying stuff, and the more stuff we try, the more stuff that we can get to work, and the more possibility we have of something not working. So several business ideas have failed so far. Nobody's been left owing as a result of these business failures. We didn't just wrap up a company and trade again the following Monday, uh, because that's not good for, for a brand name. Uh, business idea number one that failed on us, and this is getting to the man on the train, and it is getting to the importance of networking. Uh, the, the first uh, business that failed for us was we lost the Beauty's Cafe in Limerick, and I convinced my wife to leave, leave Dublin with her two kids at the time, with three now, and move to Limerick and uh, take on a Beauty's Cafe franchise, and it failed. And it failed for many reasons, most of which were outside our control, which I want to take you through those. It's what I call a perfect storm. Uh, the first thing that changed at the turn of the century, and a lot of people in the room here are foodies, so you'll you, you know this, uh, there were changing customer eating habits. The millennials were coming in, and Beaulieu's, you might remember, was famous for its bacon, egg, and sausage, big mugs of white coffee, <laughs> real butter. And the market changed, and the market wanted lattes and wraps and paninis and cappuccinos. And Beaulieu's, as a brand, it wasn't... Uh, it, it, was, it was too big to, to turn quickly. It was a bit like Titanic, right? The, the iceberg was coming, uh, but it couldn't turn quickly enough to be credible in this new space for cappuccinos and lattes and wraps and paninis. So uh, our business in Limerick, we had a beauty, beauty franchise in Limerick, was doing, doing about a million quid a year. And it was going like this steadily until about the turn of the century and it began to just dip slight, slightly. The second thing that happened was foot and mouth disease. Remember foot and mouth disease, yeah? And the government told people to stop moving around. And for once, we listened to the government and nobody came into our cafe. And so our sales literally dropped by about 20% overnight. And that was, that was a big problem for us. Third thing that happened in 2001 was 9-11 struck. And where we were based in Limerick in the Midwest, Shannon Airport, the Americans never came back. And that was a big problem. So our business had been going like that, began to take a dip, dropped by 20%, stayed on a downward trajectory slightly because of the change in the market, and then stayed flat because of 9-11. But the final nail in our coffin, I call it in my book, The Fecking Celtic Tiger, right? And the reason I call it The Fecking Celtic Tiger is because the Celtic Tiger, at the same time our business was going like this, the Celtic Tiger was pushing rents up through the roof. And our rent on a coffee shop in Limerick City went to a thousand euro a day. <laughs> thousand euro a day selling cups of coffee and bacon, egg and sausage that nobody wanted. So it wasn't a happy time. So our first business failed. And I, 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 sort of, I talk about myself in terms of ladders, falling off my ladder. So the first business fell. However, remember we said earlier, sometimes I win and sometimes I learn. Now this wasn't a particularly easy lesson, but there was lessons in it. And uh, the first lesson it was, it gave us vital experience and exposure. If I hadn't taken that step from the relative security of a corporate job to start my own business, um, I wouldn't have had the failure, but I wouldn't be standing here today, okay? Second thing, it forced us to look for opportunity. If there's one good thing that's come out of the recession that we're just coming out of, is it's forced more and more people to bet on themselves and more and more people to uh, step out and do something for themselves. 
we created our first brand called Cruises Coffee Company. We got the name from Cruises Street in Limerick because that's where we were trading. We handed beauties back with their agreement, handed back them back their brand so we didn't have to pay the 50 grand a year in, in franchise fees. We were trying to save money to pay the rent. But all that did was buy us 50 more days rent. Okay, so it wasn't a long, a long term fix. We learned how to bounce back and most importantly we learned that failure is not the end of the world. Uh, as I say to people, uh, our, our business failed but we didn't fail. Okay? The second business that didn't work on route here, I was trying to rescue the situation, trying to rescue what we had from the Beulies Cafe uh, disaster. And I set up the brand Cruises Coffee Company based on the street we were trading in. And then this, we brought the brand to Dublin. These are the kiosks, you know the kiosks on the Liffey boardwalk there? And that there is the Hapity Bridge just in the background. So we brought the Cruises Coffee brand to Dublin in an effort for me to use my experience to trade my way out of the problem, create a business and drive on to the future. And I assumed that the business would be a coffee shop franchise to compete with the insomnias of this world, etc. Uh, I'm a huge believer in trademarks and, and, and branding, so we took this image here. She was the I in the word cruises, but she was also a standalone trademark. And where do we get the idea for her from? And that was it just outside our cafe in Limerick. That was the, that was the Beauty's Cafe that we had in, in Limerick City. Some of you may or may not, not know it. Uh, we took the inspiration for that trademark from there. But Cruises Coffee Company, our Cruises Coffee Kiosk was a great idea and it was great fun, great fun being on the Liffey Boardwalk, uh, great exposure for the brand, I had lots of people saying to me, oh, you know, I saw, I saw Esmeralda, as we call it, the, the, the icon there uh, on the Liffey Boardwalk, I therefore knew which way to turn to get to Houston Station, uh, but there was no money. And we all know if there's no money in your business, eventually you're going to run out of steam, so we were r rapidly running out of steam. We exited gracefully, still own that brand, so we'll see where that might go into the future. However. I met a man on the train, this is where the, the, the story turns and there's a bit of a happy ending in this, right? I met a man on the train, and the reason I met him on the train was my, I was living in Limerick at this stage, my business had now moved to Dublin, uh, onto the Liffey Boardwalk, and I don't particularly like driving, so I was up and down uh, on the train regularly, and one morning I met a man on the train, and I gave him my business card, as you do, right? Uh, and on my business card, that's my business card today, it was, it was a Cruises coffee card, it has this little strap line, see this strap line, how can I help? And my man on the train says to me, he says, what does that mean? And I said, what does what mean? He says, how can I help? What does that mean? I said, that will mean something different to the next person I give my card to. It's simply my offer to the universe. If I can be of assistance to you, I'd be delighted. If I can help, I'll help. If I can't, I can't. But if you ever feel like picking up the phone to me, give me a call, and if I can do something, I will. And that was the little strap line. He said, that's very interesting. Put my card in his pocket, and I never heard from him again. However, the Carambola story started that day because three months later his boss rang me. He, he went to Dublin on business that day and went back to Limerick on the train. Never met him again. Uh, he gave my business card to the, uh, his boss and his boss rang me and said, uh, do you fancy doing, um, I, see, I see you're in the food game, Cruises Coffee Company, are you interested in doing a pilot project for healthy school lunches here in Limerick? And I was thinking, am I what? I'm looking for any way to do business to trade our way out of the hole. And uh, the Carambola story began. And Feed and Johnny is what we do. Carambola, just to, for, most of you probably don't know, we, we, we supply school lunches, little lunch bags like that. If you were all clients of ours, you'd all have your own bag with your own name on it. So uh, you know, Jarvis would, ha or, sorry, Andrew would have his name with with his uh, name on his bag with his name on it, his own chosen menu, etc. And that's what we do. And, we, and there's a little label there, child's name, the menu chosen for the day, the calorie count. And we do lots of those every day. Some of the numbers in the business, lunches in week one. Now this thing started, you, you wouldn't think this was going to rescue the situation. Lunches week one, we did 135 packed lunches week one. Our total revenue for week one was 162 euro. <laughs> and me with the grand today, rent roll to pay, right? Lunches last week, this is where it gets interesting, 120,000 lunches last week, okay? Our turnover for last week, over 200 grand. That's uh, not bad, okay? Now, all of that started, there's a the question, was that a good meeting? Yeah, it was a good meeting, would you agree? As they say in Limerick, you can chalk it down, that was a great meeting. And uh, but this is the reason I tell the man the story, uh, the man on the train story, is because my belief is there's one for everybody in the audience. There is a man on the train moment waiting for every one of us, right? If two criteria exist. The first one is you must be out there doing your thing. We're here today, we've all chosen to get up. Andy was on the road at 6 a.m. from Belfast coming down, right? So we've all chosen to get up and turn up. That's the first thing, you must be out there doing your thing. And the second thing, in my opinion, is you must be out there to be of service to others, okay? 
you must be out there to be of service to others. My business was dying, right? Back at the ranch, my business was dying. But I still didn't give him my business card and say, I'm in the coffee game, can we supply you coffee? We make sandwiches, do you buy sandwiches? There was none of that, there was no desperation, no panic. I simply gave him my card and asked, how could I help? And that led, and it was just that strap line that led to him saying, do you know what, this guy's okay, he passed my business card on to his boss, and I'm standing here today. And we, we, do, we do 7 million euro a year in turnover in Carambola. We employ over 100 people. Um, we've got, uh, we're a nationwide business supplying 24,000 lunches every day of the week, and every one of those lunches is different, and all of that came from me meeting the man on the train. So, talking about one for everybody in the audience, would you like a freebie? Uh, the Carambola story. I have written the book. I'm going to borrow it again, if I may, of Andy. I have written the book called Feed and Johnny, right? And all it really is, there's no big words, and it's a very easy read. Uh, all it is is the, the, the journaling, the, the chronicling of the journey from the start, how I fell into the food industry in 1980, and you know went through all the ups and, the ups and downs, managed Greens and Grafton Street, which is an interesting part of the story. Uh, stumbled across a school meals business that's going very well today, thank God. That and. Um, uh, I don't have a book for everybody, but what I do, what I do have... Oh yeah, there, there we go, look. <laughs> do you know what that look, looks like? The, the hamster wheel of life getting nowhere, running really fast, right? Uh, there's another one, end of the month, more month at the end of the money. We've all been there. Uh, and there's, there's one for business owners and entrepreneurs, right? Four o'clock in the morning, there isn't a business owner or entrepreneur that hasn't experienced that, right? Dreading the first rays of, of daylight, dreading the alarm uh, ringing. So meet your brother, and that's all I've done. I've just told the story of the ups and downs, no, no silver spoon, no magic wand, just you know, put myself out there and, uh, and, and, and uh, seeing what might happen. And so what I'd like to offer you, there's my good friend Bobby Kerry, I know Bobby Kerry, yeah? Uh, he, he said uh, feeding Johnny is a must. Uh, he really enjoyed it. And uh, what I'd like to offer you, if I may, for being here first thing this morning, and thanks very much for allowing me to be the first, first speaker of the day. Uh, if you'd like a free audio version, which is yours truly actually reading the book, eight simple chapters, about half an hour each, if you'd like a free audio version, then simply go to colinobrianmotivation.com forward slash freebie, and you can uh, pop your email address in there, and we'll send you a free download. And that's it.